Hi, uh, just a quick demonstration on how to use the Ice Cube tool. Uh, today I'm going to demonstrate how to build a uh, blinking LED from the uh, IC40HX8K breakout board. Uh, let's get started. So since this is not a, ver a very long tutorial, so not going to go to any deeper inside the, the very long code. Just showing how to use the tool. So first, let's start with uh, the ice cube, and click File, uh, New Project. Here we can have the folder name. Let's say uh, Blinker. Device family we can have uh, ice 40 UL, ice ice 5 LP, or ice 40 Ultra, ice 40 LM, and ice 40. In this case, we're using ice 40 HX 8K, which is the top of the line product. And uh, I believe the package is CT256. Let's consult the uh, schematic. Yeah, CT256. And here you can choose the different temperature, which pretty much tells you the best case and worst case and typical case. And they have uh, different core voltage uh, tolerance, and all of them are used to calculate the maximum frequency or the the uh, the uh, time uh, the uh, the time slack, and here you can choose for using the best time, the the fastest time constraint, typical and worst time constraint, which is the slowest time constraint. In this case, pretty much I use all commercial temperature. That really depends on where you're going to use the device and uh, voltage tolerance. Generally, I use two percent because that's what we get from modern LDOs. So there's really no no, no sense to 5% and uh, degrading the performance. I mean, it doesn't really affect the performance, but it affects the... It probably affects the effort in the uh, place and route and optimizer, and also it affects the uh, generated frequency port. So uh, it probably doesn't matter, but I would prefer to use 2% because that's more like the real work uh, situation. And uh, for this particular board, it only has 3.3 volt rail. So uh, you can start from synthesis from the Verilog or VHDL code or from backend. In this case, we're starting from the front end. You can click IV generation. The next window will tell you uh, if you want to generate PLL or whatever the on chip peripherals. In this case, we just keep that one. So next. And then we can add add uh, some file. We're going to add this one, but I'm going to copy this thing to the new folder. So we're doing that later. So finish. And then you should create a folder, and then we can co uh, copy the pa uh, copy and paste the file, or in this case, move move the file. And then here we have the the menu bar. What you're going to be interested in is in the tool we have configured. Here we can configure the on-chip peripherals. We have PLL modules and uh, for ICE 40, I believe, LM devices, you have SP and I2C, hard IP. In this case, I'm using neither, so not bothering doing that. Another thing is very important is tool options. You can set pr uh, preferences of the uh, Simplify Pro and uh, different efforts on or options on placer, router, bitmap, floor planner, and uh, text editor. In this case, we're going to do some tweaking on the bitmap. Since the development board, we don't want all the LEDs to turn on, so we want to disable the uh, pull of resistors on unused IOs. So, keep click this one. Set all unused IO no pull up. Click OK. And uh, then uh, here we have add synthesis files. Right click, add files, and in the project folder. Since we just copy and paste this file, double click, it should show here. Fast to add. OK. And you can see the file. And also, you can add some uh, IP cores. It's not like Altera or Xilinx, they will have a panel shows different IP cores. For latest Ice Cube uh, IDE, uh, the way you want to add some IPs is you download this IP. You have either a, a white box, the VHDL code, or have a black box, which is the placed and routed uh, functional blocks. And then you add these things here when we are doing the add PR files. 
we can have some IP design files for some uh, black box IPs. In this case, I'm using I'm not using them, so I'm just going to skip that one. And uh, then, since we already added all the design files, which is only the, uh, the single file, we can run Simplify Pro. I think, yeah, you can right click an option, you can open the window of Simplify Pro, but since it's not a tutorial of Simplify Pro, it's only a tutorial for Ice Cube, so I'll skip that one. Ice Cube, uh, Simplify Pro generates its own net list, so if you import these files to uh, Ice Cube, and also when you're clicking import, actually uh, they'll do some basic optimization that if we have not connected uh, uh, pins or whatever things, then it will be optimized out, and here you will, you will have an orange color text telling you something has been optimized out. And then we run, actually before we run placer, we can go to the uh, floor plan, uh, the uh, pin constraint editor. Since in our files, so let's use a better text editor. So we have defined a uh, clock input and, cl and the LED output. So these are the two pins we are going to define in the, in the pin constraint editor. There should be a reset, but uh, since this device actually resets all the, the flip-flops during the configuration, configuration process, so we are not going to bother to do that. And also, this board does not have integrated uh, buttons, nor it has any uh, RC reset. So there's no way you can do that. But anyway, it's going to be reset by the uh, by the uh, configuration process. So in this case, we don't have reset. We have only an input clock and output, output LED. Let's go back to the the data sheet of the breakout board. The breakout board has uh, seven LED, eight LEDs. Here, let's try to blink the first one, LED zero. Let's track that down to. Uh, oh, here it is. Uh, keep in mind that Ice Cube does not use the uh, actual pin name. It does not, uh, you're going to input the pins here. It does not actually use the pin name, use the ball name or the uh, pin number. So you have to find the, the, the pin number. In this case, the BGH chip is, is a ball name, B5. So, keep in mind this output, that's correct. Let's go to B5. Okay. And the IO star standard is going to be at the uh, LVC mouse because we chose 3.3 volt. If we chose 2.5, then here you can choose LVDS or whatever things. If it is a uh, differential enabled chip, uh, dif uh, differential enabled uh, IO pair. In this case, it's just single ended uh, CMOS. And no pull up. The default is no, well, technically speaking, the, uh, the default should be defined here. I'll use IOs, but since we already defined that to uh, no pull up, so we don't have to set here, but if you want, you can set explicitly no. And load capacitance is where you enter the uh, expected load capacitance. You won't do any difference in the actual code generation, but load cap is, is going to be used in the calculation of actual pin, uh, uh, the uh, estimated pin delay. So if you're prepared to do the post, uh, post routing simulation, then you have to depend on this value, but uh, if we are not going to run the, the simulation anyway, I didn't I did not install the activation HD also. Let's worry about that one. But uh, if you install the uh, HDL simulator, actually you can input a load cap, and uh, all of them will be used to generate the uh, pin timing constraint. And later you can use that one to to get very accurate pin pin delays. And then we need a clock input. The clock for this board, I believe, derives from the same oscillator that drives the uh, FT2232H. So ice clock, the yeah, ice clock is here, which is J3. It's a global input, global clock input, J3. And uh, here we have J3. Well, so actually you don't have to do this because you, you don't have any tries. There's only one try, so automatically go to this one. And also, for for whatever IO chip, for whatever IO pin 
the default, I believe, is always still a single-ended I/O, unless you explicitly said it must be a different one. So you can just leave it clear. But just to satisfy my OCD, I'll just set all of them. Doesn't matter. Uh, so that's it. Let's save. Save. And by the way, it's really not a good idea to set the uh, clock to no because otherwise the the stray signal in the air could possibly interfere the operation of the device if the, the clock pin is uh, floated. In this case, since we're using a well-made uh, development kit, and the clock is hard uh, is hardwired to the to, uh, to the oscillator, so it doesn't matter. In this case, setting no pull-up resistor actually can save you a little bit power consumption. And let's run the placer. The synthesis result actually t uh, tells you how many resources it used without the actual routing resource. And later, after one placer and router, it will tell you the actual resource used. Uh, 48, oh, uh, wait a minute, yeah, 11 uh, large blocks. It's weird because every block has, I believe, 8 logic cells, so it should be good for um, 88 logic cells. And we're only using 48, so it should be using only 6 of them, but I don't know why, but they actually occupy 11 of them. But anyway, it's more than, more than enough. We have uh, 8,000 logic elements, and we're only using 50 of them. Who cares? And then we are running the router. I believe for the entire tool, the only uh, synthesis tool is uh, developed by uh, uh, Simplify Pro. And uh, I believe there's an another one uh, supplied by Lattice itself called LSE, uh, Lattice uh, Synthesis Engine. And then all the other things like the importer place router, they are developed by Lattice in-house. And finally, we generate a bitmap. You are going to have all of these things automated if you're using Altera or Xilinx tools, but if you're using S-Cube, it's not a really nice, cup, uh, well coupled and uh, well polished tool, so you have to do all of them manually. But anyway, the file is stored in the implement SBT uh, output bitmap. And here we have the NVCM uh, bitmap, the Intel hex, and the beam bitmap. These are going to be flashed into, in, into the device. Then we start up the program, which is called Diamond Programmer. It's a standalone programmer, or it can be a part of the uh, Lattice Diamond. Since I only use IS40 devices, I don't, I don't really use any of the traditional uh, lattice devices, so I don't really want to install the, the, the full version of Diamond, so I only install the, the, the standalone programmer. Okay. We we'll try to do a uh, JTAG scan, I believe, to try to see what is the device installed on the JTAG chain, but uh, it doesn't work all the time. And for my board, it never worked. It always mis misidentified the device. He identifies that as LP8K, but actually it's HX8K. But I believe these devices probably have uh, probably have the same uh, device ID, JTAG chain ID, or whatever. In the operation we can uh, program the MVCM, which is one-time programming. So I'm not going to do that. Or we can fla uh, flash the uh, flash ROM. We're not going to do that. We're just going to download the program to the uh, configuration RAM. Program and verify. It's very important to verify the program because uh, Diamond Programmer. If you just do a fast program, even if you're not connecting the device, you're just programmed to nothing. It will pass. There is absolutely no any safeguard. So you probably want to use the at least program verify. It. And uh, if you really have strong OCD, you can program verify that read it back and the perfect com uh, binary compare the, the input and output files, but I won't do that. Device information, these are the 
these are all uh, fixed, you cannot ma uh, modify them. It just tells you the JTAG code or whatever things. Probably that's how they uh, actually actually detect the devices. And we select file. Here we're just using the, I, I'm not sure what's this file, but uh, I always use uh, either of them. I'm using the bin file. Click OK. And uh, this icon is the program icon. Actually, there are a lot of options. This uh, the, the 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 diamond programmer is much more polished compared to Ice Cube, and it's a very very powerful tool. You can use this to debug your uh, staple stream, or you can do batch programming or whatever. This is a super powerful tool. But uh, in this case, we're just going to use it as basically uh, development programmer. We generate a XCF, which is I believe somewhere like the. Uh, the intermediate code for a uh, for a, a virtual machine environment, and it will execute the the code, and uh, that actually programs the uh, the behavior of the the FT two two thirty two, and then that actually programs the FPGA device. Anyway, it says successful, and I don't have a camera, so you cannot see that. But actually, the LED blinks at uh, the desired two hertz rate. So that's it. That's a basic introduction of how to use Ice Cube 2.